What's going on guys, my name is Aldenero and welcome to episode 127 of my FIFA 15 career mode. We're with Manchester United and our first game of this episode is an away trip to the Emirates Stadium where we take on Arsenal, who are actually the first team that we played against this season. And interestingly enough, the first team that we ever played against as Man United manager, so that's pretty cool. Um, I see a lot of people commenting on other videos at the moment asking when my West Ham career mode is going to be up, and it will be up possibly Thursday, maybe Saturday morning. I have started playing for it. I'm just not too sure uh, what day I'm going to upload it yet, but I'm thinking either Thursday night um, or Thursday afternoon, I mean around 4 p.m., or else uh, Saturday morning, so we'll see how that works out. But as you can see in this game, in the 20th minute on the dot, we got a free kick, which James Rodriguez took, and it went through the wall so easily um, that it, it went into the back of the net, and I was so surprised because it, it was such a tame free kick, and as soon as I hit it, I had that, like, ah, fuck, I've just wasted a free kick type of feeling, but uh, it ended up going through the wall, and the goalkeeper could do nothing about it, I guess because of the fact that it went through the wall, um, and the wall shouldn't have broke apart like that, like you see here, Martinez and whoever that other player is, uh, it just goes through and the goalkeeper thought that the wall would have covered that, but uh, a few minutes later Arsenal came forward with Jack Wilshere on the ball as he plays it into Santi Cazorla before receiving it back, and then he plays it into Ed and Dzeko who finds Alexis Sanchez, whose uh, well-placed shot is saved by David De Gea, and then the rebound shot is also put wide by the Spanish goalkeeper. Uh, two minutes later they got the corner kick and Javi Martinez's header hit, hits off the crossbar, um, or was it saved? I think it hit the crossbar. And then we came forward uh, immediately after that with Timo Hooper taking on Chambers at right back before finding the cross towards Hector Vialba. And I was so sure that that was going to find the back of the net. I could not believe uh, when it went wide. Like, it just did not seem plausible at all. But Van Ginkel had a volley in the 45th minute before it was cleared away by the Arsenal defence. And then we come into the second half uh, very much on the front foot still. Although Arsenal did have a couple of chances, we still kind of maintained that dominance. And Luke Shaw's cross finds Hector Vialba in the 49th minute. And the urgent Argentinian cult hero striker makes it 2-0 to us and I thought from this moment on it would be easy enough to start pressing forward and uh, to properly destroy Arsenal and then Gareth Bale's cross in the 57th minute finds James Rodriguez and his header finds the back of the net and I couldn't believe I'd scored two headers in the space of nine minutes because generally I tend to not really score that many headers um, especially when they have Javi Martinez playing in defence like he's a big guy but then in the 81st minute Arsenal hit the crossbar uh, very unlucky at that chance and then we came forward immediately after with Memphis Depay on the ball as he took on Morgan Schneidel and got into a really good position before playing it into Jeffrey Schlupp whose shot hits off the post and I really thought it was going to be four and I really wanted it to be four as well but then check this cross out from Sanchez straight into the path of Theo Walcott who heads it on to Rodrigo who sees his header saved in spectacular fashion by his fellow Spaniard David De Gea and we end that game with a very impressive and comprehensive 3-0 victory over Arsenal which was good because we wanted to respond to the critics um, of which there are none obviously but in this imaginary universe there probably would be that the team is getting too many draws but we go into our next game and this is against FC Basel in the Champions League where we actually have an impressive record in the group stages um, I went with the 4-2-2-2-2-2-2 with uh, Vieto and Schlup up front I don't really know why I went for that formation I always thought FC Basel played with such a strange looking formation in their team um, but they have some good players in defence I know they've got Ivan Ivanov and Marek Suki or Suchi um, but we came forward just two minutes into the game with Alberto Jordan on the ball, who chips it into Jeffrey Schluck, who gets into a really good position. Uh, his initial shot is blocked, but the rebound comes to Memphis Depay, and the Dutchman makes it 1-0, not even five minutes into the game. I gave... Uh, um, did I... Alberto Jordan. I might have called him Alexis Jordan at some point. Maybe I just said Alexis Sanchez, but Alexis Jordan is a singer, so she's not on the pitch at the moment. But uh, Alberto Jordan, whose shot there goes straight into the arms of the goalkeeper, which actually resulted in him getting fouled and a penalty for Gareth Bale, which he would step up to take with his left foot. But uh, Alberto Jordan is a Spanish player who I had really high hopes for. He looked like he had insane potential, and I think he's only 22 or 23 in the game, and he's 79 rated, but he'll never progress because of that stupid glitch, so... 
Um, I think the only way of ever seeing the best out of him is to sell him on and then buy him back when we go to Real Madrid or Barcelona, whichever team it is that ends up accepting us, if that even happens. But we come up to the half hour mark and Jordan gets on the ball before seeing his shot saved by the keeper and put out for a corner kick. Uh, then we come up to just two minutes later with Basel on the attack this time as the ball comes to Gonzalez in midfield, who plays it across into the path of Gashi, who plays it wide to Hamdoui, Ham I don't know. But he plays it into Gashi, who I, I hope that's not his real name because that's a horrible name, but he scores just beyond the half hour mark to pull a goal back for the Swiss team. Um, they are Swiss, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, we'll say they are. No, they definitely are. Then we come to the 45th minute of the game with Jeffrey Schlupp tearing down the left-hand side of the pitch, and he gets into a great position before seeing his shot go towards the near post but end up smashing off of it and going wide. And then we come into the second half just a few minutes in with uh, Shalaba um, intercepting the ball in the 47th minute and playing it to Jeffrey Schlupp, who finds Vieto, who has a look back up and plays it back to Schlupp, who chips the ball into Gareth Bale, who takes it really, really well before slotting it home to make it 3-1 and extending the gap to two goals in the lead once again. And uh, Gareth Bale is in absolutely spectacular form, and I'm so glad that I signed him from Real Madrid because he's an amazing player. Then in the 49th minute, Gashi came very close once again with his shot being saved by David De Gea. And then we come up to five minutes later with Gonzalez playing the ball into Gashi, who finds Fry in an advanced position, but he has to go back to Hamdoudi. Hamoudi. Hamoudi, that's his name. Uh, and then the ball comes to Fry on the left-hand side of the box before his cross finds Gashi. He plays it down to a guy with a really long name who ends up scoring in the 57th minute and another goal pulled back for Basel in this game but I was hoping that it wouldn't be it wouldn't affect the team overall and then we come up to five minutes just before the end of the game with Jeffrey Schlupp playing the ball into Jay Hemmings who plays it into Adeyemi who finds the back of the net which is impressive because he scored with his right foot and he's in fact a left-footed player um, I think he's 21 years of age but uh, he scored there with his right foot and he's only got like a two-star right foot because he's left-footed and that's how EA works. But uh, yeah, that is the end of the game. A 4-2 victory for us overall and now we'll have a look at the squad report which again, I don't really have anything to say about. It might look like it's a little bit fast so you need to uh, pause it on any players that you want to have a look at. I'm not too sure how I feel about the team overall. I think... Uh, my defensive record is as bad as it's ever been, but like attacking is so good that it doesn't really matter. And we have some great players uh, who have incredible stats playing in some uh, uh, some of the most effective positions for me overall. I actually, in my next game, went for a custom tactic against Stoke City to try and uh, relive the days of my Aston Villa managerial career. But here's a, a proper look at the league table for the first time this season. As you can see, 10 games played, zero defeats, but we are only in fourth place, and we do actually actually have the joint second best defensive record in the league so maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on myself it just feels like we're conceding an awful lot of goals but um in this game we have James Rodriguez playing as a false nine with Gareth Bale and Timo Hubert on the wings just ahead of him and then uh, Jesse Lingard, Daniel Kister and Van Ginkel in midfield. Lingard has 90 short passing, that's why I put him into that position. Uh, Shalaba didn't really look like he was 100% fit so um, I decided to just go with that and we're playing with a sort of a very fluid and fast midfield. Um, with a lot of players playing in sort of free roles and the team uh, spreading wide an awful lot. So um, I don't know if it's an effective tactic really. It's hard to say unless you use it against uh, like a certain amount of teams and Stoke City aren't really a good team to, uh, to judge it by because they're incredible in this game and they're always really difficult to play against. But Timo Huppertz did give us the lead just after the half hour mark with a really nice finish from a really, really tight angle and uh, that was pretty impressive from him so I was fairly happy with that. And then two minutes later, Jesse Lingard plays the ball into Daniel Kister who finds James Rodriguez who takes on uh, Zimmerman in the Stoke City defence who's, I think that's the, the right back who used to play for a German team. But uh, James Rodriguez does really well to get into a good position, but sadly his shot couldn't make it in. And then Gareth Bale somehow fumbled the rebound. I don't know how that didn't go into the back of the net the way that he uh, controlled it there. But um, 15 minutes from the end, the ball comes to Luke Shaw at the end of a corner, and he couldn't do anything from it. But we did manage to maintain possession to try and create some kind of a chance. And I love these kind of opportunities from a corner where you go for a long shot after, like this one from Bale. But sadly, it did not find the back of the net. Uh, which is a shame because it would have been nice to make it 2-0 in this game because Stoke did come forward in the 85th minute with Jamie Ness on the ball, uh, the former Rangers player. He plays into Ryan Shawcross, the former Man United player, and Ryan Shotton plays it back into Shawcross, whose shot produces an absolutely amazing save 
from David De Gea in goal as you see here with the palm of his hand just keeping it out of the net and it was definitely going to go in and it would have been a sweet moment for Ryan Shawcross too against his former team but thankfully for us it wasn't to be and that is the end of the episode so like I said um, the uh, the first episode of the West Ham career mode will be going up pretty soon I might only do one season with them depending on how well it goes I'm not too sure overall but have a look in your sub boxes on Thursday at 4 p.m. or else on Saturday morning and it will be uploaded on one of those days I'm fairly sure that that's gonna happen unless I become too busy in the meantime uh, this series will continue uh, I'm not sure in what capacity um, but it will definitely continue so thank you all for the support on this series overall and if you want to leave a like on this video at the end that would be much appreciated I've been El De Niro, thanks for watching.